What's up, everybody? Technical difficulties, Keefy once again. Keefy from ghostcoldmag.com. You are watching the Weekly Witch Roll. I am still wearing my spectacles. What a day. What a day. What a day. Usually we go live a little earlier with these. Uh, welcome to you all on all the streamers. We're going late, but we're going hard. Dillinger Compound is here, of course. Of course you are. Thank you for being here. Super appreciate you. It is another almost Friday upon us. We are at the, uh, a little later than I expected, but... Shit got in the way today. What can I say? What's up to all of you on TikTok? This is my friend, Lady Baffle May, uh, otherwise known as the plushie that I got awesomely from the band Twin Temple, who I love. Uh, it's very warm, so I'm going to take this off my hand. But uh, this is a somewhat anatomically correct satanic goat doll. Uh, and I'm a grown man that has one. So anyway, uh, thanks for being here. As you know, this is our weekly show, Rock Metal News, interviews, features here at the site. The biggest news of the week. Metal festivals, concert tours just announced, new albums coming soon, all kinds of hype shit. Uh, if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. We like to say that right at the front. It helps. Every little bit helps. We hit a big milestone this week on YouTube, but we would like to get those subs up. If you can help, please do. So let us dispense with the pleasantries of the show and get on with the show uh, again, tomorrow is Friday the 12th. It's pretty much Friday everywhere in the world, but here, Sean O is here. Caroline B is here. A lot of people jumping in on TikTok. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Um, Brodsky and McGrath of Caven will be at Ben Wyman's Coffee on the 20th. Thank you. I did not know that. I have seen a solo Brodsky or duo Brodsky and McGrath show at Roadburn 2018 when they paid tribute to, uh, Caleb Schofield, who was my former neighbor in New Hampshire. And a, a dude I love on base um, in Caven. Uh, but that's cool. Thank you for telling me, Dillinger Compound. That's your Dillinger news for the week there. Um, I appreciate that. I didn't know that was happening, but I'll try to promote that uh, overnight after I uh, do this show and run some errands and save the world. That's what I'm out to do. I'm out to save the world. Uh, it's good to be here once again. This is uh, the, the hour I look most forward to on the week beside my podcast, uh, my vinyl podcast, which I'll be talking about in a second. So it's time for the announcements. There's some tough ones. Um, we've been bringing you this story every week. Uh, the, these shows are dedicated to Sonia Ramos, uh, guitar luthier from Florida, battling stage four cancer. We got some very bad news right before the show via an Instagram post. Sonia is currently in the hospital. Uh, they have only given her a few more months to live. She is trying to raise additional funds for different kinds of care options and treatment options since uh, chemo is no longer an option. Um, this is just very rough news, but, uh, we're, we're pulling for you, Sonia. We're going to do everything we can to help you for as long as we can. Uh, and if you can give anything, please do. We would appreciate it. Uh, I gotta kick this off with some liquid death. This is the convicted melon. I drank through all of my squeezed, uh, squeezed to death orange drinks. So here's another convicted melon. We always like to say, you know, um, We'll talk about it in a second, but uh, I have some some pretty interesting announcements. Thank you, Dillinger Compound. Thank you. Um, this is really a bummer. Uh, CJ Snare, who was the vocalist and lead singer and co-founder of Firehouse, kind of glam, third wave glam rock, hard, hard rock, hair metal band, died. He had a heart attack after several years of illness. He was supposed to rejoin the band on tour this summer. Uh, just super sad. Uh, great singer, probably best known for the power ballad. Love of a Lifetime, but they had some hard rock songs uh, that were pretty good. They are playing this weekend kind of a tribute show to him on Saturday, and uh, it's going to be the band is going to get together and uh, celebrate with fans. So I think that's pretty nice. Erwin, one inside, or Erwin inside is here. What's up? So anywho, also, this is, this is a pretty uh, rough one. This is a person I knew personally, although we hadn't been in touch for many years. Michelle Wachatsik was a drummer. Uh, and a humongous personality and much more than that in the Poughkeepsie area in the metal scene in New York City, probably best known in that area for the band Darling Demoniac, many other bands, uh, genius level intellect, super fun, outgoing personality, great gal. And she, we found out she passed away today uh, through a best friend of hers. So uh, this is a picture of her with John Longstreth. So she gets around. She used to get around uh, at shows. And uh, Temploded Shivas is here. Pineapple Juice 99 is here. I'm a fan of some pineapple juice. 
But uh, yeah, sad news on that front. And then moving on to some other things, as you know, we have a weekly newsletter. Most of our competitors send out a newsletter every single day. We do not. But if you'd like to get a digest of all the things we do during the week, the most important things, the new music out every Friday, our, our show, interviews we've done, special things. We did a big interaction with our giveaway of VIP Slayer tickets. We're going to talk about our other recently closed giveaway in a second. Those are all announced on the newsletter. So sign up for the newsletter at the link in the description and the link in our link tree. We appreciate you. Once again, we just recently hit 10K on Instagram, super duper. Now let's get those numbers up everywhere else. We do put some exclusive content on some of our other socials like TikTok and Twitch, which we're on right now. Uh, looks like we've got about do, 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 maybe about 20 people joining. I figured normally we would be on earlier and we got a, a ton of people coming on then. But, you know, I appreciate everybody that's popped on. Thank you. Also, also, uh, in addition to Twitch, you know, we're on X and all those things, threads, blue sky, whatever it is. Also, if you're just sick of social media and you don't have time to watch these shows or listen to podcasts, we are on discord and we are on Reddit with a constant feed of all our content, our best content, the videos that I do on YouTube, our interviews and features, major stories from our website, everything else, no commercials, no filler, no BS, no social media, herbs, angry typing at you just get metal news delivered to your door, uh, or delivered to your phone or your devices or your, your laptop. Oh, uh, so yeah. Also, Hey, we, like I said, we big announcement. We got to 900,000 views here on the YouTube channel. Uh, we have been around for 12 years. We probably had this YouTube channel for about 10, 11 years, but we've really only worked at it for four or five. We kind of didn't, you know, we just weren't big on it early on. And then we doubled and tripled down and now we make tons of video content every week, brand new stuff, feature interviews with, you know, superstar rock and metal bands, as well as underground bands. Um, a lot of stuff you'll hear in about in a second. But we are we got 900,000 views. Like to get those subs up. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you are not subbed, please give us a like and a subscribe. Ding that notification bell. I hate to harp on that, but it's just a thing. We appreciate it. Also, we have subscriptions now on YouTube, and I'm thinking of ways to give a special experience to private subscribers of the channel. It's as low as two bucks a month, and we'll make extra content just for you. I think this is a lot more uh, manageable and possible for me than uh, Patreon or anything else. So maybe that will float your boat. You might be interested in that. I appreciate you if you're here. Also, also, here's the big features of the week, and we kicked this off with a pretty big one. So we mentioned our giveaway with Necrofire. Necrofire was on the Decibel Metal Tour with Halder and uh, Devil Master, and they were so good. And I hung out with them, and I did a podcast interview with Chris, the, the front man. And, of course, Necrofire played and is part of Hell's Heroes Festival in Houston that just ended a couple of weeks ago. Chris is one of the bookers, so we talked all about that. So we ran this giveaway on our Instagram and across our other socials with a hashtag, and we gave away – a, a vinyl LP and a shirt and as well as a couple of CDs. And I got a great response. I doubt that they're going to watch this show, but I got a great response from one of the winners and they, they didn't know about the tour and they were not particularly a big black metal fan, but they were intrigued enough by our giveaway and our hype of the tour and how much promoting we did to go buy a ticket to the tour. So they go buy a ticket to the Decibel Tour in Florida. They go to see the show. They have an incredible time. They become a newly minted cult black metal fan. And then they go buy merch from all the bands. And then they win our giveaway for entering in the first place. Super cool. I'm glad to be part of that person's first experience with uh, a metal show. I hope they were treated well and with respect. Also, also this week, uh, this is super cool. We got to do this really cool collaboration with Liquid Death and Elf Cosmetics. Liquid Death and Elf Cosmetics put out the Corpse Paint Makeup Kit. Elf Cosmetics is famous the world over. You know Liquid Death. It's not a shameless plug, but I happen to have one here. Liquid Death is your you know, mountain spring water, sparkling water, and teas in 100% recyclable aluminum cans so they did this makeup set they sent one to our scribe and jill of all trades jesse frary in, in georgia 
And she did the makeup tutorial with the kit, and it was amazing. It came out great. You can currently see a short version of it on our Instagram and our TikTok. There's a little shorty on YouTube that's a sample of it, and we're going to put a longer video with clips and pictures and maybe some behind-the-scenes stuff up on YouTube soon, maybe in, a, maybe in a week or so. So check that out if you're a fan of Corpse Paint makeup tutorials. I think it's pretty fun, and I was stoked that we got to do a fun thing like this. Also, also, I brought back the five-minute reviews, and we're going to start doing these a lot more. Um, YouTube does not like this artwork of a demon with, like, a dead body as a cock, but unfortunately, and a bunch of dead bodies falling from the heavens or something around it. Thanks, YouTube. But I reviewed Necrot's Lifeless Births out this week from Tank Crimes Records. We have an interview you'll see in a second that we did with the band. I'm super hype on this record. Easily one of the best death metal records of all of 2024. So we're bringing this series back, and you can start to expect to see at least a couple of these a week. I'm aiming to do two a week when possible, so I think it'll be worth it. We'll find out. I've got at least one co coming up for next week. I'm going to probably do them on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, some combination of those three days. Those are my free days when I don't have a bunch of other things to do. Also, also, we had a bunch of feature interviews this week, some huge ones, North Lane. Uh, Marcus Bridge, uh, once again, back on the podcast, he was on with us about a year and a half ago, North Lane, one of the best metalcore post-hardcore bands in the world. Their brand new EP is out this week, Mirror's Edge with superstar guest appearances from members of Parkway Drive, Winston from Parkway Drive and Ian from Carnival. And it's really a throwback to their, you know, some of it's really brutal and heavy and some of it's not, but, uh, it's super cool that. Uh, Marcus came back on the show and chatted with us. Really great to have him. And it uh, seems to be blowing up on YouTube. Uh, seems like their fans came out and balled out for us. So I appreciate it. Again, Necrot, Luca from Necrot hung out with us. We talked all about the brand new album, Lifeless Birth, all about Bay Area metal and death metal especially and, and crazy riffs and, and how he's improved as a vocalist and, and sort of the arc of the band. I don't know if you remember, there's a considerable bit of hype uh, around this Released because Necron's last album, Mortal, was the 2020 album of the year for Decibel. They didn't rush to put another record out. They took their time. They toured, uh, you know, relentlessly as much as they could with the album that came out during the worst time ever for touring. But, you know, they really persevered. I saw them last summer. They were just absolutely sick. And I can't wait to see them play some of this new material again. Also this week, this is Genevieve from Jen and the Degenerates, an awesome uh, anarcho-punk band from the UK. They just wrapped up a US tour with Flogging Molly and Amigo the Devil. They are blowing up. They're on Marshall Records. That's right, Marshall, like Marshall. I'm endorsed by Marshall. Marshall Records, uh, an offshoot of Marshall Amplifiers. Jen Rules, we had a great conversation uh, about a myriad of topics, and their new album is out now also. Also, also, ran today, Jeff Fab. You definitely know him as the drummer of Zach Wilde's Black Label Society, but he's also been in a bunch of other bands. He was a co-founder of In This Moment. He was a member of uh, so many other bands. Uh, but we interviewed him. He's actually got a solo career he's launching. He's put out a series of singles where he wrote, recorded, and sang everything not just drums, as well as created a whole bunch of music videos like visualizers and lyric videos for these songs. So I think it's hella cool that another member of Zach Wilde's band is kind of branching out. And uh, we sat and chatted with him. I hope to talk to him again sometime when he puts out the full-length record, perhaps later in the year or another time. Insect Dark, that's, yo, dude, like, you have, I'm so hype. I love Dana. Uh, I have a complicated history with Swans. She's a member of Swans now. I grew up loving Swans. I saw Swans back in the day so many times in the village, in the East and West Village in New York City. And um, I just have a complicated history with that band. I can't go into it right now. But I love Dana. And we will hopefully be interviewing Insect Art again. There's some drama going on outside my house. I don't know what it is, but it's nothing to do with me. But it sounds gnarly. Also, a couple of other interviews we ran. This is really great. I love me some old school death and thrash metal. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than this sometimes. I was very, very fortunate and very lucky, I have to say, to interview uh, Jim Forgot as 
uh, from Morbid Saint. Morbid Saint's cool. You have seen me 100% in these videos wear my purple and black Morbid Saint shirt. Um, and their new album, uh, Swallowed by Hell, is out now, and it's super sick. Uh, just can't say enough good things. Also, also, Death Pose is a quasi post metal super group. A sort of alternative metal supergroup from Chicago, made up of other members of you know sort of similarly infamous bands. And we interviewed Jason Thompson. That was really cool. Ran that. Also, there's the Ghost Cult Magazine podcast. You know that this show will eventually be a podcast if you can't hang out and watch the whole thing. But a lot of our we not only run all our interviews as podcasts, we occasionally have special things just as a podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, YouTube, Amazon. Google Podcast, Podbean, whatever it is. And so we had a couple of really special ones this week too. This is Zahn, the German uh, electronic underground band, and they were interviewed by Tom Osman, Ghost Cultist, uh, reviews editor, musician himself. So far, I have to say that Morbid Saint is the thrash record of the year, but I suspect I know there's another one coming that might top it, but you're not wrong. Uh, so Zahn is awesome. And in addition to this interview with Zahn, Tom joined me for my monthly podcast special where we talk about the album of the month and we forecast the albums coming out in April, as well as a little recap of what you might've missed in March. If you're a big metal enthusiast and a record collector and, a you know, you need to know what's like going to be the big records at the end of the year, you want to listen to this podcast once a month. Um, Tom stepped in for my usual partner, Steve Tovey, the senior editor of Ghost Cult, but Super cool to have Tom with us to do these things. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. There's also the Glacial League Musical Podcast, Beer Metal and Swearing, Vinyl Nerdism, sometimes some hockey, a lot of pop culture references. Me and my host, Nick Cameron, I am the co-host, and we talk about – usually we do series and, and episodic uh, little campaigns on vinyl and on albums and all kinds of stuff. And we have kicked off a new series on the early albums of Queen. If you wanted to tell me the Queen is the best band of the 70s, I wouldn't fight you as much as I love Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and Thin Lizzy. Just food for thought. Queen's early stuff, maybe not their first record, but like their early stuff is untouchable, really. Also, also, we premiered a bunch of songs this week, so I just like to give them a little bump. If you're into nerdcore rap, Epic Levels is a, a duo of rappers who also have a, a, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast and a sci-fi fantasy podcast, and they released the uh, Mega Dungeon Men EP and single. The EP is out later in the month. The single is out now. It also features Mega Ran and a couple of other dudes. We've interviewed Mega Ran for the Glacially Musical podcast. Pretty killer. Uh, also, Back From Zero is a, a boogie rock, hard rock band from Brooklyn, New York, from New York City. We debuted their brand new video for you, directed by John LaMacchia, who you probably know from Candiria and Julie Christmas's band. Very cool, very fun. There's an interview coming up soon with that band here at Ghost Cult. Also, uh, Shroud of Despondency is a cosmic black metal band from the Midwest, and we debuted their new single today. They have a split release coming up soon at the end of this month. So, so much stuff. We're just trying to help promote and share and help all the bands. This is the last one we did this week. Masonic Wave is a low-key supergroup, another Chicago supergroup uh, featuring members of Yakuza and other bands. And uh, so insane. Uh, definitely one for you, Dillinger. You would like this this uh, Masonic Wave band. I was thrown off a little by the Masonic in their name, but it's not what you think it is. Okay. We're whipping through this early part. Hey, happy birthday to uh, my BFF and another ghost cultist, Curtis Dunlop. This is my favorite photo of him. It's a bit of an older photo, but wherever you are, if you're watching this, brother, I love you. And happy birthday. And have a wonderful birthday. Another trip around the sun. It's always a thing to be uh, happy about. Miguel73BKNY is here on the gram. Hello. You're watching our rock and metal news show. Here it goes, Colt. See who's watching this thing. A bunch of people on X, a whole few people on TikTok. And again, it's later than I expected. So maybe not as many people are going to tune in. But hopefully next week, just a reminder, you can sponsor this show. You can buy us a super chat or a super thanks or some kind of donation. Buy us a Kofi on coffee. We also sell advertising here at Ghost Cult because we have to keep the lights on somehow. We don't make a lot of money doing this. We don't have corporate sponsorship like Loudwire. Um or bigger sites, but here we are. 
And we are also part of the Lamb Goat Media Network. That's how we were able to do that Slayer VIP tickets giveaway is through our partnership with Lamb Goat. There's many more cool partnership moments coming up with them soon. And so just a reminder, if you're interested in advertising your upcoming band's release or your record store or your any related business to music or metal, the Lamb Goat Media Network has you covered, lambgoatmedia.com. And then there's a cadere of an ad platform, ad opportunities, as well as a bunch of other partner sites. Also, also just a reminder, we love our affiliate partner, Sticker Mule. Anybody who wants a free coaster or a button, I have one here somewhere, uh, just holler at your boy here in the DMs or comment. Comment, I want one on YouTube or Instagram or whatever, and then DM me your address, and I will mail you a little care package. But uh, Sticker Mule, I should hold it up the correct way, right? Not upside down. Sticker Mule is your one-stop shop for die-cut custom stickers, but they also have coasters, buttons, all kinds of things. And the other thing is, if you sign up for the link in our description, you get $10 off your first order with Sticker Mule. We get $10 off our next order, uh, order with Sticker Mule, so it's always beneficial. We don't support anything here that we don't also use or believe in. So that's all the pre-show stuff. Now on to the rest of the show. We're going to try to flip through these. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do a better job. I do what I can, when I can, how I can. All right, music festival time. Everybody knows when you see this meal this weekend. Down in Philadelphia is the Decibel Metal and Beer Fest. The pre-party is tomorrow. The full festival is Saturday. It's going to be bananas. Uh, I've gone a couple of times and I loved it. It was intimate. Not that many people. All these awesome breweries from acro across the country, the most metal breweries in America. So you, you, There's a ticket pass that's just a ticket to the show, and there's a ticket pass that's also the beer sampler deal. And uh, they also have a little merch area. For all the bands and and the you know decibel magazine is how you know obviously heavily promoted and helped curate this uh can't say enough good things about them and your boys neck rot who i talked about a bunch earlier are the decibel artist of the month and the cover artist on this this current issue of decibel Roadburn is next week and we will be covering it once again for the uh, i don't know 12th year in a row we're covering Roadburn. ghost cult was originally formed in the netherlands as a zine to cover Roadburn and avant-garde metal festivals. And so our own Dante Torrieri will be heading out there this week. He was at uh, covered Zombie in New York City this week, a band I'm extremely excited about and love, so much so that I buy their vinyls. But Roadburn is sick, Jesus and Mary Chain, Chelsea Wolf, Kanate, and a million other bands. So yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Look out for that review and ginormous photo dump probably at the end of April. Or a little bit after. Also, also, Sick New World is just a few weeks away. That's taking place in Las Vegas. We will soon know the identity of the Slipknot drummer. It's going to be any day now. They are currently in rehearsals for this. This is their first show back since their last show with Jay Weinberg at the end of November. He was fired the next day on social media. They didn't even tell him. Super not cool. But System of a Down, I can't imagine them topping last year's set that was like two and a half hours and pretty much every song they ever played, but I imagine they're going to do something different this year. Uh, Alice in Chains, A Perfect Circle, Pussifer, so many other bands. Uh, it's gonna, it's a little sooner in the year than it was last year for the first one, so hopefully it's not as hot. We might, I believe we're going to be covering it. That's the goal. We're supposed to be going out there. Apache's in a band joined. Hello, Apache's in a band. Good to see you. All right, so we're just running down the metal festivals. This is really cool. I wasn't expecting to do a story on this, but then I looked at the lineup and I was like, I've seen a lot of these bands. This is the Just Like Heaven Festival taking place at the Rose Bowl at, in mid-May. And, uh, you know, not bands that I absolutely die for, but the Postal Service, Phoenix, Death Cab for Cutie, and the War on Drugs. I've seen a couple of them. Mike Snow, Passion Pit, Always, Tudor Cinema Club, Fantagram Rules, a lot of collabs in the metal world. Tegan and Sarah, I've seen fantastic. Broken Social Scene, I know. Slave Bells, War Paint, I saw at Riot Fest last year. They were really fun. And uh, a few others. So, And The Return of Gossip. So I just thought this is fun if you're in the L.A. area and you like a little more alternative rock and less so alternative rock, pu punk and some, you know, like uh, electronic music, but not industrial uh, in the L.A. area. Plus a bunch of food trucks and food kitchens, including Burger She Wrote and Dave's Hot Chicken, which you can't get everywhere in the country. We have one up here in Oakland. It's pretty fantastic. It's legitimately hot. It's not a little hot. It's a lot hot. 
Uh, okay, Roadburn again. Uh, Welcome to Rockville is uh, coming up next month. And again, just a reminder, I think it's selling out. They announced their festival running order and stage times. So if you go to Welcome to Rockville's website or their socials, they're going to have the scheduler, if you're going, down to Florida. So we, we wait to see how that's going to go. Also, also Mil- Milwaukee Metal Fest similarly announced their running order and their full schedule for the weekend. We will be covering Milwaukee Metal Fest. Once again, we covered the first one. I would like to go next year myself. We'll find out. I love spending time in the Midwest, St. Louis, and Chicago rule. I briefly went through Minneapolis once, and it was pretty cool, but I'd like to go back. Maybe I'll go back next summer to see Metallica in Minneapolis or Seattle. And then Milwaukee's on the bucket list. I got record stores. I got friends there. It's cool. Maybe I'll go. Spotted Cow Beer, which I had in Chicago, not too shabby. Once again, a reminder, Maryland Death Fest coming up soon, uh, possibly the last one for a minute, at least a year. They're definitely might be. I don't think it's the last one, but they're definitely going to go. You know, they're not going to continue to do it at the clip they used to. But I'm very excited for this MDF. Also, also, this looked kind of like fun. The booze cruise. I count cruises and, and things like that with festivals. So this is just a floating festival. The last ever booze cruise, unfortunately, in Hamburg, Germany at the end of, uh, I guess it's taking place. Um, da, 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 the end of May. and or May to the end of June. So Jeff Rosenstock, as you know, is the champion of alternative rock. And uh, helped basically overthrow the merch cuts. He is the artist who did the most to piss off Live Nation into, you know, for whatever it's worth, limiting their merch cuts and and doing that on the road program. Jeff is the guy who brought awareness all over the world to people who didn't understand about merch cuts. So Jeff and Jeff is also great. He rules. Be well, cool band. Pew pew pew. The Mefs, Teenage Halloween, Death Lens, cool band. We're covering. Uh, Coffin, Phantom Bay, Irish Handcuff, Shoreline, Between Bodies, Penske File, Eaten by Snakes, Death Pose, we mentioned them already, very cool, for Fever Sleep, they'll be coming up again in a second, Swan Songs, Captain Asshole, this is a pretty, this is pretty good, I've seen some of these bands, I think these are pretty great, sad that it's the last one ever, maybe something else will replace it another time, all right. Moving along, once again, another reminder, we are two months away from the No Values Fest in Pomona, California, headlined by the Misfits and Social Distortion. Eh, Social social D is when I go take a piss break or a meal break. I do not. I don't fuck with them that much, but uh, okay. Iggy Pop, Turnstile, Better Lovers, Dillinger Escape Plan, and many others. Pretty cool. Looks like some more people are joining. Thank you for being here. Uh, This is, you know, sometimes you got to just bow down. I don't spend a lot of time promoting Metal Sucks here. They are our competition. Uh, I know some of the folks that used to be at Metal Sucks, and, uh, you know, they were all right. But uh, this is pretty amazing. Uh, It's five, five or six months away from Louder Than Life, the biggest rock and metal festival in the country. It takes place in Kentucky every September. And they announced this week that Trapped, who no one gives a shit about because of the singer's a douche, and Death Rocks, who's not bad, were, they dropped off or were removed from the festival. We don't know about what happened with Death Rocks. Maybe something happened. But, uh, you know, then the guy from Trapped goes on a tirade about the government and it's the man keeping him down and... Blah, 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 wah, wah, wah. No one cares about your one-hit wonder and your band, dude. Um, Kambuja is here. What's up? Good to see you. Good to see you, former Ghost Cult subject. Um, Yeah, Trapped. Who gives a fuck? But I just thought it was pretty funny. The festival's a long time from now. And uh, he's still talking about his 8 million streams a month. Like That's like actually a lot when it's not. Also, Is for Lovers, the festival series, a touring, traveling festival series brought on by Hawthorne Heights. Uh, they're not playing every one of them, but they're playing some of them. I don't like the lineup enough to go to Tahoe. That's the one closest to me. It'd be about a three-hour, three- or four-hour bus ride away from here or car ride. I'm not that into it to go, but um, the California one, the, the Southern California one, looks like ridiculously good. I would definitely go... To California is for lovers. Hawthorne Heights, South Sin, uh, one band to be announced. Amberlynn, who is going on a hiatus. 
Cartel, Bill Murray, Stick to Your Guns, The Wildlife, New Aesthetic, uh, Boy Comma, and more. That one's dope. Ohio is for lovers at Riverbend Music Center. Looks good. Hot Mulligan Silverstein. Yellow Card is on a bunch of these. Under Oath is on a bunch of these. So some of it's pretty great. I like that Hawthorne Heights is not the headliner of their own festival in most cases. I guess they're at all at all the seems like they're at almost all of them, but it's kind of interesting that they're not the the headliner. Uh yeah, just my uh just my opinion. Uh pretty interesting. Um and let's see. Also, also, that was all the festivals. Now it's time to whip through the concerts and then get on to the news, the rest of the news. Concerts. This is uh this is pretty surprising. So outside lands is a sort of alternative rock and other music and sometimes rap concerts, uh, annual concert here in San Francisco where I live. And they announced, they were planning kind of, they didn't give it a name yet, but they were like, we're going to plan a metal version of outside lands for one day related to the festival. So they're promoting, it's another planet entertainment that promotes it. And so this is, I, I was pretty sure after sick new world system of a down, wasn't going to do too much this year. Cause you see Darren, uh, Malconian's Scars on Broadway is back up and running with a lot of touring and maybe an album coming. So this is pretty incredible. First time ever in a standalone once in a lifetime event, but I, fe I feel like it's going to be every year they're going to try to do a metal festival at Golden Gate Park. System of a Down and Deftones with special guests Mars Volta, Viagra Boys, and Vows. I saw Vows open for Deftones, so they're friends. Mars Volta... Definitely some mutual respect going on between System and Deftones and them. Tickets go on sale tomorrow. The cheapest ticket is going to be like 200 bucks. So I'm not so sure about how that's going to work. But it's all good. It's like Saul Goodman. Saul Goodman. Dream Theater. Red Alert. Dream Theater has just announced their 40th anniversary tour. As you know, they reunited with Mike Portnoy and they just completed their brand new comeback record with Mike. Uh, I love Mike Mangini. He did a great job in the band while Portnoy was out for 14 years. Uh, you know that their set list for the 40th anniversary tour is going to be bananas, especially with Mike back in the band. So be interesting to see if they keep the dynamic that they had while he was out, you know, things that he used to do that they do themselves. We'll see how that works going forward. Also, also, this is already sold out. The uh, New York... Tattoo Festival, uh, specifically because Orange 9 Millimeter is playing the first date, but uh, New York Tattoo Arts Convention into another Orange 9 Millimeter Raw Brigade, Raw Brigade spaced uh, and calling hours, as well as Integrity, Earth Crisis, Dead Guy, and some other bands uh, the second day, all on the Terminal 5 rooftop. I didn't know there was a stage there, but I guess it's becoming a big thing. Iceland 3920 is here. Iceland 3920, my dream in life is to go to Iceland. It's on my bucket list of places, along with Florence and New Zealand. Uh, I want to go see the Northern Lights. I want to dip in the, the salty pool. I want to go to the metal bar, uh, Reykjavik Iron Maiden bar. I want to do all the things. Plus, I love Solstice Fears, my favorite, one of my favorite bands. Uh, this is pretty interesting. This came across my desk today. This is... Uh, Oh, hang on. Um, I had it called up and then I lost it. Um, Nadia Tolnochkova, the creator and founder of Pussy Riot, is doing a headline show at the American Folk Art Museum as a benefit on May 16th. I don't know if you're a fan of the political punk rockers. They were just here for New Year's Eve. Um, they performed with dwarves. They headlined over dwarves at a little bar in my neighborhood. I just don't like doing New Year's Eve, so I didn't participate, but I think it was fun. I think it was fun. Uh, the, the show is technically at the Society for Ethical Culture, 2 West 64th Street, right where my old high school is in New York City. And, and again, it's to benefit the Folk Art Museum. So that's kind of cool. I thought it was worth talking about. I like Pussy Riot. I would love to interview them someday. I don't think we're big enough. Rafael Trejo 21 is here. Hello, Rafael. Welcome to our Rock and Metal News Show. We're just running down some tour dates. This is pretty fun. This is Anachronism. And they have booked uh, an Infinite Meanders European tour kicking off in Switzerland this summer. Uh, uh, Cult Booking has presented this tour. A very cool death metal band if you like 
some really gnarly extreme death metal. Architects dropped a new single this week, uh, Curse or The Curse, and they announced a huge headline tour in North America. Hopefully, we're going to get to cover it. We might be able to get an interview. I pitched their publicist, like, hey, I would love, you know, we interviewed Sam like 10 years ago before the band blew up, and I would love to come back now and have a, like a reflective conversation. So let's see what happens. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx it, but I might have. We'll find out. Also, also here again is Jen and the Degenerates just off of that tour with Floggy Molly and Amigo the Devil, their first American tour. You can see our interview all about that on our channel on YouTube, but they have booked a brief UK tour, sort of a victory lap after their American tour and the release of their new album. Uh, again, great punk rock band. This weekend, taking place in Australia, one down and a couple to go. Uh, the days like these is touring uh, the Suckers for Fame tour, and they are taking out our friends, The Last Martyr, who have a new single out right now. And so uh, April 12th, which is tomorrow in Melbourne and Saturday in Sydney. Love The Last Martyr. Look them up if you like. Very similar to Spirit Box, actually. Not that far off. Maybe no songs with Nicki Minaj, but pretty close. The Warning just announced their brand new album coming out this year. It's a band I loved interviewing it after Aftershock a couple of years ago. They have announced a huge tour of Europe, uh, maybe only their second tour ever, and certainly their first headline tour of Europe, I think. So pretty great. Locrian, who just dropped a stellar new extreme metal album, they have announced a summer tour of Europe. Lots of good times to go overseas. It's expensive to tour, but I'm always grateful when people do. Again, here's Death Pose again. I talked about them earlier in the show. They have a co-headline tour at Fever Sleep, including that booze cruise I mentioned a few minutes ago. Very nice. Uh, this week's horrible and hard-to-read logos, Jesus Peace and Sanguisa Gabog have kicked off their new tour tonight. With Pestilength and Gag, that has kicked off tonight in Columbus, Ohio at Scully's. So that is running through Boston a month from today. So this is 30 days of, uh, 30, 31 days of hardcore and death metal. Not a bad combination, if you ask me. Doesn't always go together, but it seems to now. Also, also, we got a brand new song from Wardruna we talked about last week. As you know, we are big Wardruna fans. I believe they're going to announce a new album for late in the year or early 2025. And now they have booked an extensive world tour, including Red Rocks, where I have never been and I really would like to go. So I have to really consider it. I just saw this tour last night. This is not the whole tour poster, but this is the show I saw last night. DNA Lounge here around the corner from my house in San Francisco. Blotsam and Jetsam. Dude, they were so awesome. I have the set list right here. Let's pull it up. I got the handwritten set list from the band. It's all bangers. A couple of more recent songs, but pretty much a lot of the set is from like maybe one song from the 90s and everything else is from the 80s. And they just absolutely slayed. They have one of their best bands ever as a lineup. And uh, man, Eric A.K., that dude is ageless as a singer. He sings so good. If you love the thrash metal, I certainly do. Uh, once again, we were bringing rumors of this tour last week. This is an official. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. This is not a game. Loserville tour sponsored by Morning Boy, Limp Biscuit, Bones. It's the UK Bones. Nate No Face, and yes, Corey Feldman. That Corey Feldman, the Frog Brothers Corey Feldman uh, from The Lost Boys. Uh, I really would love to interview Fred Durst. I'm not even ironically joking about that. I would love to interview him someday, or Wes, or anybody in the band, but specifically Fred or Wes. A lot of people are hanging in with us today. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you all. Also, also Wayfair, the awesome black and death metal band, has announced a big tour of the U.S. Go check that out. Eisenstreit and New Button dropped a surprise new album. Maybe their last, not sure, but they just dropped it last week, and then they announced a pretty big tour to support that. When you get to be a certain age in the music business, 20, 30, 40 years, you do whatever you want. You don't have to follow the rules. You just drop an album with no pub, you know, no publicity. You don't need publicity. You have your diehard fans. Front 242 did a similar thing with a little bit more of a, a press push. Kathleen Hanna, who you probably know is the lead singer of Bikini Kill, 
sometimes re- you know, they did a huge tour last year. Uh, I'm not sure how much more touring they're going to do, but they reunited for a big tour the last few years. She is doing a book signing and tour of her new book. And I believe she's doing a reading and a, and a Q&A in New York City, at, uh, in Brooklyn, New York, at the King's Theater in New York City. Rebel Girl, a memoir. Uh, Rebel Girl, My Life as a Feminist Punk. I love Bikini Kill. Uh, Bikini Kill and L7. It's like really hard to pick your uh, your poisons there. I love both of them so much. And uh, yeah, I would go to this. And uh, it's being the moderator is, and uh, you know interviewer is Molly Ringwald, who's perfect for this. So I think it's a lot of fun. Um, yes, that Molly Ringwald, if you were unsure. Uh, I don't have a tour poster for this, but Sebastian Bach kicks off a huge U.S. tour this weekend supporting his brand new album, The Child with the Man. He is going to be playing at the Rainbow's 52nd anniversary concert in L.A. this weekend. We love uh, the new song is a ripper. It's a ripper. You know, we talk about all these concerts, not just people tell me all the time. It's like, I didn't know this band was coming here. I'm so sad. I missed them. And, um, you know, it, it makes me sad when they miss things, you know? So, uh, people tell me like, I didn't know they came to my town. So Sebastian Bach coming to your town. If you missed him, go see him. Anywho, uh, here, this is, this is just a, some personal news that I wanted to share. Uh, Thrill House Records is my favorite record store in San Francisco. I do also like Amoeba and a bunch of other little stores, one, two, three, four, go records, Econo Jam records, but Thrill House in the Mission District, not too far from where I live, has, they started having, um, show basement shows at their record store, including a lot of, uh, all ages and, and punk shows and really keeping that. Bay Area Punk Spirit Alive that started with Gilman Street and other places in the Bay uh, at the Mab and the Stone, the same places all the metal bands played, punk bands played. They are all in on Record Store Day again this year. Special opening time at 8 a.m. I will probably be there. I'm going to try to do a Record Store Day Essentials for Rock and Metal Fans video. Maybe that'll go up Monday. I'm going to spend the weekend working on it, but I am excited about it. Possibly a Monday afternoon thing. So, yeah, Record Store Day next week. A lot of activity in your local record store. Support your local record store. Uh, one more time, just a great shout-out to our friends in Biohazard. They are heading to South America with their OG lineup. They already have some new music recorded. We don't know when we're going to hear some. They are going to be here in the Bay Area at their Omega Fest with Forbidden's. Really, Forbidden's Omega Fest with Biohazard and Warbringer and Exciter and Hatriot on May the 4th. Be with you. Uh, this is a bummer. This is a cancellation. This is Queens of the Stone Age cancel their Edmonton headline show in Canada a few days ago, just uh, like within hours, the people were in the venue and they canceled their show due to illness. Um, you know, where we know Josh has had his struggles, uh, with health in the last few years before their new album came out, but, uh, they have been riding high up until this. Hopefully this just a bump in the road and they reschedule. Phantom Eye is here, the Phantom Eye. Hello. Thanks for watching our Rock and Metal News show where we're running down concert tours and information, and we're just about to kick off the news of the week. So the big stories of the week's a bunch of Metallica news. You know, they're getting like about six, eight weeks out from hitting their next tour dates in Europe for the summer, and then a few handful of dates in America, and then they're done with the M72 tour. They dropped the... uh. Gershon Awards, where they covered Elton John as a tribute to Elton John and Bernie Taupin, who were there in the audience getting an award. Their covers went live this week. So you saw it was uh, it aired on PBS here in America and then shared on YouTube a bunch of times. And they shared like a clip of it. I'm sure they're going to put a pro shot version of it out. Also, Metallica announced their Rye the Lightning, brand new number two version of the Rye the Lightning, blackened American whiskey. Uh, this is Day, uh, Rob Dietrich. Their master distiller. I've met that guy. I've interviewed him. Uh, I think people have sick of seeing the photo of me, Lars, and him uh, at Costco where he signed a bottle for me of the M72 whiskey, which I have not drank because I have some health problems and I can't drink it right now. They also announced their collab with Dixon Flannel based on the 40th anniversary of Ride the Lightning, 40 years of Ride the Lightning in a couple of months. Pretty exciting. You're going to start getting Metallica videos and Metallica news and Metallica collabs and things as they ramp up to tour again. 
Also, this was heartbreaking. So uh, if you're fans of black metal, and I don't know if you are, but it, you should be, uh, the original home, the place where the original first wave black metal scene was born was in this record shop in Oslo, Norway, called Helvete, Hell. And that store in the basement had the Black Circle Club, where it was, you know, Euronymous and Dead and Varg and uh, a bunch of other early you know, Emperor, a bunch of early black metal. They were all teenagers and youngsters, young adults. And so the, um, a couple took over the store a few years back and renamed it Nessa Blood. And there was a fire in a whole row of stores and it burned down. I know people are like, ah, ha, that's the guys who burned the churches, right? Now their store burned down. But it's not the people who own it now are not those people who were, you know, obviously Euronymous is dead a long time, like 35 years. And, um, but they were preserving it. It's a piece of metal history. And Inferno Festival takes place, uh, one of the many metal festivals in Norway, but it, it took place every year. And they would do a cultural tour around the city, all these places, including Nesplot. And I had always wanted to go there. I actually have a patch from it when my partner, Omar Cordy, the co-owner of Ghost Cult, went there. It was very sad that it burned down. Uh, also, also this weekend, super exciting. The first showings of the new print of Dawn of the Dead right in time for its 45th anniversary. I think I have a ticket for next weekend because it was sold out immediately. So I'm going to go watch it and maybe do a retrospective review or maybe a video, a video discussion of Dawn of the Dead. Uh, here's, here's Jerry Cantrell. Jerry Cantrell, uh, panicked this week when he thought he had his, uh, infamous G and L, uh, Fender copy with the blue dress girl on it that he played all his classic Alice in Chains stuff on and a lot of his other material was, he thought it was stolen, but actually he just misplaced it. So, oh my God, it's lost. Oh my God. Psych. I was wrong. So I'm glad it's not lost, but also get your shit together, dude. Sergeant Thunderhoof is a badass stoner rock psychedelic band from Europe. They are booked for the Planet Desert Rock Weekend we talked about last week on the show, and we might cover that next year. That's uh, just a short hop, skip, and a jump from me in Vegas. And we interviewed John Gist to promote this year's festival. And Sergeant Thunderhoof, uh, they're uh, a small underground band from the Midlands, I think, of the UK, not a big city, not rich guys by any means. So they're booked to play the festival. They have to get money to be able to come over here. Visas, plane tickets, hotels, a tour bus maybe. So they have started a GoFundMe with special all kinds of things, like a, you know, some kind of fundraising campaign with all kinds of cool things and interactions with the band for a little bit of money that you can help support their dream. I would like to help support their dream. Exodus is releasing their... Uh, a live album, British Disaster from the Fabulous Disaster Tour in 1989. It's pretty much a very close, just two members removed from the same lineup as now. Uh, Zetro, Gary Holt, and Tom Hunting still there, back there today. And then uh, Rick Hunolt, who is no longer in the band, but awesome. And Rob McKillop, who is not the bassist anymore, but he was great back then. So that's pretty cool. Live album, vinyls, the whole shebang bang Tapes, if you're a tape guy or gal or they or them. Uh, this one blew me away. This is, this is, you know, like the word supergroup gets bandied about a lot. Um, and you know, like there are these bands that just like, you can't appreciate that like 25 years ago, you could not even really be on someone else's record to do a guitar solo or do a guest vocal. Like you see all the time now. And now you have whole bands coming together with guys from different bands. So listen to this. This is category seven. Signed to Metal Blade Records. And I, I think John Bush, of, of Anthra uh, formerly of Anthrax and currently of Armored Saint and other bands, he was kind of saying that this was the project he had in the works. Phil Demel is a lead guitarist, formerly of Machine Head and formerly of Violence. Mike Orlando is also on guitar. Jack Gibson of Exodus and Bittner. So this is insane, dude. This is just absolutely insane. Mike Orlando already has another super group he's a part of, Sonic Universe, with Corey Glover of Living Color. So they announced uh, they're signing to Metal Blade and basically, again, members of Anthrax, Armored Saint, Adrenaline Mob, Machine Head, Overkill, Exodus, Shadows Fall. Uh, no music yet, no tour dates yet, but just they're on all the socials. Follow them there and stay tuned because undoubtedly they'll be dropping some stuff. If you have interacted with Brian Fair of Shadows Fall, speaking of Shadows Fall, he is not on Facebook. So he warned people on social media this week that you should not be 
paying attention to him on social. Like he's not trying to interact with you or ask for money. He's definitely in there commenting and tweeting and posting, but he is not on Facebook where you can hit him up. We're getting through this. We're almost done. This is the feel-good story of the week. Absolutely. Uh, this made me so happy I almost cried. Um, I've been going through a lot of stuff personally. I'm, I'm, I'm having a tough time. It's a struggle bus right now for me. I'll be okay, but it's it's a little hard. I'm not going to lie. Maddie Watkins of Year of the Knife, appeared today on the Hardlore podcast in her first interview since almost dying with her whole band in a van crash last June in Utah. This is under 12 months, 10 plus, a little over 10 months since the accident. And she is not 100%, but she had her first practice this week with the band. They are hopefully making plans to go out and maybe tour eventually. She said she's physically not 100% yet, but vocally, she's as good as ever. And she seemed really great, and she's grateful, and, you know, she's still... It was really harrowing to hear about the accident. She was like, you know, uh, her partner who's also in the band remarked that he had like closed his eyes to fall asleep. And the next thing he knew he was in the hospital. So he blacked out and was injured, maybe a head injury. And then he came to, they were all broken arms and concussions and stuff. And the, uh, you know, she talked extensively with the hard lore guys. i I interviewed Colin and hung out with him. I'm a big fan of Colin and Bo and what they do. And, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they do this for a living. That's my dream. I would like to do Wayne's world for a living too. Same thing. So yeah, uh, big ups to Maddie and Year of the Knife, and I just hope for the best. I hope that physically, she said she still has not 100% physically since the accident, but like she's living her life and doing stuff and working and, you know, all that. So that's really great. Fucking Open Air, just a reminder, is sold out for this year. So that's just a reminder there. It probably should have been in the festival section, but whatever. All right. Uh, again, three, I think some of these things are... Uh, showing up here early oh this is fun this is this is my vibe man i saw a couple of shows with just two bands and i was like i don't really i don't really need this i don't really need it. six bands on a wednesday night at your local all ages venue a single working sure sm58 um you know the the i you know midweek shows are hard in general because people work and have school and stuff and then uh yeah um you know well, four and five band bills on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are terrible. Like, save that for Friday or Saturday. For real. All right. Let's do some New Music Friday. Uh, here's the records coming out. It's already to tomorrow in most of the world except California. So here's the records coming out for New Music Friday. And I'm going to just do a quick rundown of some stuff you should be picking up and spinning. Uh, About Us, Take a Piece, on Frontiers SRL, Add-On. Uh, self-released attacker, the heavy metal band, God particle on cruise del sur Azimut 19 by horizon on wormhole death. It's probably some death metal battle Creek maze of the mind on MDD records, Belmont, the post hardcore band liminal on pure noise records, benighted the legends, Ek bomb on season of mist blue oyster call. Don't fear the reaper ghost stories. I believe that's their farewell album. And the final album in their whole history as a band that is also a story connected to their very first lyrics and stories. The Cosmic Dead, Infinite Peaks, Elk Witch, Azimuth, Eventide, Waterline, Exist, the great death metal band with Max Phelps from uh, Death to All, Water, uh, Hijacking the Zeitgeist on Prosthetic Records, Heavenly Blue, We Have the Answer, Heavy Temple, I was wearing my Heavy Temple hat yesterday at the... Uh, Flots show, Garden of Heathens, great album on Magnetic Eye Records. Eminence, it's the extreme post hardcore. Our writer called it violin core, but like they're so heavy. The Black on Believe Music, Jacob's Castle, Enter the Castle on Epitaph Records, Junkyard Drive, it's King Zebra, also on Frontiers. Lincoln Park's got that Paper Cuts greatest hits singles thing out with some unreleased music, so it's great to hear Chester. Uh, Love Sex Machine on Pelagic Records, Mother of All, Global Parasitic Leviathan, Necrot, again, Lifeless Birth, North Lane, Mirror's Edge, Nest, which is the band that opened for Pantera and Lamb of God recently on the Arena Tours, Endeavors, that is featuring members of Agoraphobic Nosebleed, Sarcasm, Morning Ghoul on Hammerheart Records, Set Your Sails, Bad Blood on Napalm Records, Tarot, Glimpse of the Dawn on Cruise Del Sur, Tonnerre, 
La Nuit Sauvage on Cruise del Sur. Tear Battle Ballads, the Viking metal guys from the Faroe Islands. The Vision Bleak Weird Tales and Vulture Sentinel. So a lot of cool stuff coming out tomorrow. And the next couple of weeks, uh, along with Record Store Day, are going to just be banana balls. Banana ball. So that's all your music Friday. And it's time for the mailbag. And this is amazing. So uh, I don't know, you know, Ghost Cult, we do a, a ton of concerts. It's really ramping up now. We have a lot of coverage coming soon. Folk to Calmer, the symphonic black metal band, Girl School, the classic heavy metal, new wave of heavy metal band, uh, health review coming up from me and Anita Frausto. Uh, so much cool stuff coming up in the world of touring. And so I went to see health last week. The review should run tomorrow. And, uh, Oh, we also ran a review of, uh, Mr. Big, uh, Queens, arm armored saint. So many cool reviews. So this is health. This is a preview, a sneak preview of our review running tomorrow of health. who just wrapped up their big tour with uh, pixel grip and King Yosef and some local openers. And so I went to the show and I went to go cover the show at August Hall, which typically doesn't have heavy shows. I do think that Jesus Peace show is at that venue, but uh, they're mostly known for like R&B and acoustic punk and folk and things and, and you know, rap. So they, the, the security looked nervous because of all the goths and the metalheads, but Health put on a phenomenal show, like an 18 song set, including their Deftones cover. But check out the review tomorrow. I'll be very in depth about it. And so I went to their merch table, man, and I got this. This is sick. You got to watch. Look at this patch. They were getting rid of some of their old merch at a discount, and uh, I picked this up. And this is, look at this patch, 100% pure cum metal. I like funny things. I'll hold it up there for you guys on YouTube. Pure cum metal, 100%. Oh, my God. Like, this is perfect. I need this in my life. You could just imagine it on my vest. I really have no more room on my my typical battle vest. So I think I'm going to start a second vest anyway. 100% pure cum metal. Health winning the merch game with just a patch, let alone all their awesome shirts and vinyls and everything. They had an array of merch. I don't know if you know, we do merch videos also on our YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, just so you get a flavor of what to, you know, what maybe we went to the first or two, second or fifth show of the tour and you're going to a date later in the tour. So check those out. And that is our show. That is not me, but that is our show. Uh, off the rails, Amtrak. But uh, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. As I say, every week at this juncture, the show is a tough time in the world. So thank you for being here. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And as I always say to close these things, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay as metal as humanly possible. I am Ghost Call Keefe. Check us out at ghostcallmag.com. And we are out.